welcome to our second show uh, of Something Funky. Um, this is our second, it's kind of still very much in the air, but we've kind of tried to start off with a new, like a completely different film to the first one. So yeah, this is number two, ironically, uh, which we have Something From Nothing. The idea of this show is it's supposed to be a show mainly about uh, showcasing fine art illustrations and graphics. Uh, Everyone here is from Brighton of some extent, who have otherwise exhibited, uh, I think they've graduated from Brighton, they're studying at Brighton, or they're associated with Brighton, but coming from all different places in the world. But no one really knows who myself and the guys who are running this are at the moment, so we, we kind of thought it'd be quite important to tell people who we are. Um, we're two guys from Ravensbourne, originally. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice here. And um, that was good. <laughs> We're two, two guys from Ravensbourne who uh, have done work experience with a variety of different companies doing all kinds of different projects, um, as well as studying. And there's now four of us. Uh, we have people coming from Brighton, Norwich, UCA and Ravensbourne. And we've done, the main two of us have done a lot of work experience with this company, Aberrant Architecture. Um, there's quite a lovely photo of us. Um, and we're based in the BNA, so doing a variety of different projects inside the BNA which is anything from designing bars to doing pop-up projects for kids. So Pop-Up Playground, which is a project which is designed uh, basically creating a series of boxes. I know there's other people that did this here, who's walking away. Woo! Yep, and uh, <laughs> basically it's just a, <laughs> a series of uh, boxes and what we did was took elements of the, uh, the V&A and allowed kids to create their own sort of theater set and then we created them a magic, massive playground. We also did a thing uh, in Selfridges, uh, which was known as Wonderville. Wonderville was a pop-up uh, cityscape which was designed on people's opinions of London. So it's based around the idea of if people love or loathe London and the elements they loved or hated around London. And we designed this city on their opinions. And then there's another project, for example, The Love Stories of Recession, which is a variety of different... <laughs> yep, there we go. Which is uh, three different... Uh, Oh, I love you, Pete. <laughs> it was three different uh, exhibitions, which are all about uh, the release of a book. And uh, the first show was the Argus Range, which I've been told to call it, which was a series of book stands designed and created from Argos catalogs. <laughs> and uh, this was used as a way to show and discuss about this, this book that was released. The second one was very much a mural, a variety of sections of pieces of work. And the third one being this large sort of uh, laser cut at Ravensbourne. <laughs> Laser cut Ravensbourne piece, uh, yeah, which did involve things such as cleaning, which Zia does enjoy doing. Um, obviously, the pair of us have been involved with El Paso quite heavily. Uh, Zia, for example, managing the place and myself working here as a barman at some stage, with a few other people here that have done that as well. And uh, we've been, we were involved with the design of that with Aberrant as well, and the same with the Gopher Hole, the place that you're in. So we've had a good connection with this place, obviously, from sort of day one that it's been designed like this. And since this whole new idea of being a place of collaboration and curating and designing sort of came around. So we massively have to thank Aberrant for kind of being a massive influence <laughs> to us. It's, they've really sort of influenced what we do. But we've had association with companies such as Desitecture, which is a multi-award winning experimental architecture firm which is a practice that's built on uh, giving the opportunity to young designers and architects to be able to come and sort of work on big national projects and go and make towers for kids and design things where kids come along and get involved with workshops and they design McDonald's to go in massive skyscrapers like that, which is fair enough. And uh, do things like myself doing a project which is granny filming at the moment, where the, the guys that film that are actually here as well. Um, which is a project which is all about a sort of documentary about the idea of age discrimination, uh, sort of uh, the deterioration of health and what, how important family and friends is and how important it is to have those people that support you. And the idea of, uh, that you could become a potential entrepreneur when you retire, which does lead to ideas sort of uh, granny towers, which is something for poor old people, or uh, the shortage warehouse, which is an idea for people that have money who are older. Not saying that we don't just do this kind of... Uh, sort of really kind of, I suppose, slightly jokey work. We do, we have done some quite serious stuff as well, which is working on uh, some artwork for Ledlease. But this kind of, with this particular project, the idea of the importance of it was that Ledlease gave students the opportunity to design these pieces of artwork in their new head office. 
and instead of going to a company, you might not, you know, a company is completely separate. And that's something we, we, we really like to help, is we like to give people that are young the opportunity to showcase themselves in some way. And this doesn't just relate to young, as you've seen when I've talked about old people, it also relates to poor as well. So master planning of different streets and areas throughout Greenwich to create pop-up markets such as the Plumbridge, Plumbridge Street Market, which was a market, a Christmas market with a variety of free food, free mulled wine, um, loads of stuff, a face painting of back mass massages for all the residents to come along and see what an opinion of how the area could be redesigned and redeveloped would be. But we've done things like working for new designers last year. Um, who goes next? Working with the World Architecture Festival as well, last year and now this year in Singapore. And a couple of the guys have also gone to the Shenzhen Biennale. <laughs> <laughs> and done projects out there as well. So we've, between a variety of us, we've had quite a nice opportunity to travel around. There's been the opportunity to be involved with things such as the Interior Educators Conference, which is a conference designed for uh, all the heads of the interior schools to be able to come and discuss and debate and talk papers through that they've discussed about something they've written about 20 years ago and carry on talking about that again. But this time we had students coming, so completely separate and completely different. And the new kind of thing is the new degree show at Ravensbourne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is uh, Ravensbourne 2012, which is the new degree show which will be graduate showing all the graduating students throughout the whole building. Um, going back to work again, uh, the idea of redesign and sort of re reinventing of things like the Shepherd's Bush Market is how do you redesign something that's incredibly iconic but make it sure that the community feels it lost. This particular project it was really key that the community was kept involved and they came to continual meetings where it just ended up getting slated by people who own a store. But the idea of that project was very much to get this idea, to push forward the idea of community. And then the more, I suppose, different side of it as contemporary office design, creating something that's completely different and unknown of. Um, as a pair, I, I think we've had some incredible opportunities uh, to work with real clients as well as what we've done at university. And we've kind of want to, you know, offer the kind of opportunities we've had back as well. So anything that we feel that we've done, we, and anyone we've met, we want to be able to give up someone else that opportunity as well. We feel that why can't anyone else do it, I suppose. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, number one, first show, which was Create. Uh, this was our first show we did, which came from a series of, uh, I suppose, writings for, uh, to do with dissertation, which is all about the idea of um, giving power back to artists and giving artists the opportunity to showcase what they want to show, especially young people who don't have as much of an opportunity to show what they want, because quite often when you graduate, you go and work for someone doing someone else's work for so X amount of time, and you don't get the opportunity to show or express what you want to show. So the first idea was initially for people to be able to do that. And we had our first show, which was here. Um, we completely different feel to it, as you can see. So it was very much an opportunity to showcase what was what in the design world. And we had everything from graphics, illustration, fine art, and a big, like, uh, I can't even think of the word now, hanging thing. Um, it was beautiful, it really was. Um, and, you know, it was a really good opportunity for people from all different backgrounds to meet each other and to talk and just discuss, debate, and, and drink, really. And uh, we had everything from these sort of really new modern technologies, so prototyping of tap designs, which are 3D printed, which to watch is really quite scary. Yeah, you just see a, a, a machine just layering up and designing something out of powder to anything from the very traditional way of ceramic making and very traditional way of painting and working. And from our first show, we had people from all those sort of institutions and from all those countries, so it was quite sort of diverse. <coughs> and yeah, we really enjoyed it. And, we kind of have this sort of theory that if this one works well, well, why don't we do another one? Hence this one, number two, I guess. Um, so anyway, something from nothing. The kind of this show, uh, the idea was a magical power process of transmuting a common substance, usually from little value, to something from to make something of great value. So literally creating something from nothing in the most literal way. There were a few relatively, I suppose, slightly strict rules to it. There are 20 artists, there's one theme. Everyone gets one A2, we have four talkers, we have three days. And that is something from nothing. And now we've got a series of talkers, we've got uh, a variety of different artists that come to talk. We've got 
Rufus, who's first. I don't know where he is. He's hiding. And uh, we've got Monique and Tom and Joe as well. So we've got four different artists who are exhibiting today who are going to come and discuss a bit about their work and what they've done. Yeah, thank you. so much trouble <laughs> seriously like 17 years of like art education and now I'm doing the art talk if you know what I'm saying <laughs> okay. the hunter has very much become the hunted today <laughs> anyway so yeah my name excuse my language anyway my name is Rufus uh, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm experiencing a massive power trip at the moment. <laughs> I feel like the Hoxton art teacher, <laughs> even though I've been here for four hours. <laughs> First slide. Okay, does anyone know what a visual metaphor is? <laughs> anyone? We're all visual people here in an art gallery. Yeah, well, I'm showing off now, because I've been to art college. <laughs> I haven't graduated, though, which is pretty funny. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> anyway, excuse me. Um, yeah, anyway, like, anyway, before we go on to my work, I thought it'd be worth talking a bit about my childhood, you know, portrait <laughs> of the artist as a young man, as it were. Uh, uh, I was in special needs. Anyone in special needs at school? No one? Yeah, one person? Yeah, cool. we made it, dude. We made it. We made it. We, we made it from one really supportive bit of education into higher education, you know what I'm saying? So, like, when we were in school, all we were allowed to do was colour shit in, okay? Ten years later, I'm at university. Uh, I'm still colouring shit in, okay? Uh, so this was my painting. Um, Around the corner, you should totally look at it for like ages, like ages. <laughs> it's multi-layered paint. There's so many issues dealt with it. Can you hear me through this thing? <laughs> London mic <Mike> check, in. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't say that. Anyway, so, yeah, we, we'll yeah. Yeah, anyway, so, all right, so visual metaphor, you know, you, as I said before. It's actually pronounced metaphor. Yeah? yeah? You'd know that if you'd been to Brighton Polytechnic, okay? <laughs> Visual metaphor, okay? All right, so, no, no, like, let's bring it down a second. You know, like, marbles, you know, marbles, marbles. You're a kid, you play with marbles. Marbles are fun, marbles are good, yeah? Right? Take your socks off, take, take your socks, not now. <laughs> take your socks off, and you've got marbles on the floor, right? You tread on the marbles, fucking painful, isn't it, okay? So this fun object, which was a marble, undeniably, now you've trodden on it, and it's caused you a great deal of pain. Has anyone ever experienced that? Yeah. Yeah, good feedback, good feedback. <laughs> okay, so, all right, so marbles, nice looking, nice looking, key point, but can be unpleasant, much like mental illness. Would you agree with me? <laughs> Attractive in some situations. <laughs> Being able to show off, okay? Being depressed for most of the rest of the time, not good, okay? Like, so... Uh, so, bear with me. Unpleasant marbles, mental illness. You okay? So, so we've got that parallel drawn. That's a metaphor. Okay. <laughs> um, so within this painting, I've just kind of really grabbed that issue by the balls, the marbles. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, the the painting is called Escape from the Depressing Marbles. So what I'm doing, it's very simple, it's very simple. I'm, I'm driving the car away from the depressing marbles, okay? So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, okay, we're done. No, we're not done. We're not done. <laughs> the key being here that I'm fucking broke, okay? And um, I'm selling this painting. I'm going to say it straight up now. And uh, so I thought I'd start bidding one. I'd run, you know, eBay, Sotheby's. <laughs> Who wants the first bid? First bid, first bid. 
Five thousand pounds. Come on, come on. Come on. This is London. Five. Five, yeah. Quite a lager. Yeah, okay, alright. I'm not an alcoholic yet. Um, okay, uh, uh, right, okay. So, no one... No one really interested in the... Oh, fuck it. Yeah, right, right. Anyway, uh, I kind of had the feeling that, that would happen. Never really been cut out for the old painting, as it were. So uh, I've put a very short video at the end of my other major talent. Yeah, like, is there an audio out? Would that be alright? Yeah, so just bear with me for a moment. We're going to line this up. Um, it's going to make you feel a lot of feelings that you thought you buried when you were a child. <laughs> like, and uh, it's called dancing techniques. Um, photograph I took of someone on the train, uh, you can't really see it very well, looking at, uh, I think, a picture of Jesus in some sort of biblical thing, book. Um, so I'm sort of focusing my talk on the books I've made, um, how I've been kind of disappointed with some of the books, uh, because of, in exhibitions, people don't really want to touch them much, and I don't get much view out of the images I do in them, so it's a nice chance to show the images I printed in them. And, um, yeah, talk about my work that I've submitted today. <clears throat> this is a nice little book that I also got um, handed out on Oxford Street. Um, I think it's a comic book from uh, Christian Evangelicals. So I really like this, and I wanted to make a sort of little comic strip um, influenced by it. So these are the drawings that I've been doing sort of every day to work on the tube. And then this is my final submission called um, Fight or Flight. Um, yeah, so I sort of, the idea for the title was that uh, I'm cutting my wart out in my garden at 13, and on the other side, I'm kind of sweating a lot. So it's sort of, I sort of chose to interpret the theme about metamorphosis, and just about the weird stuff that I got up to when I was a teenager, really. Um, <laughs> So, yep, that's that. <laughs> On to the next one. I was um, reading, I'd been recommended to read Uzumaki, which is the Spiral series by Junji Ito. So that's a little uh, section from the graphic novel. And I really liked it because it was about a teenage high school in Japan and this stuff was going on and people were mutating into things because of the psychosis of the spiral. So that's what influenced my piece. Um, I also get influenced by weird stuff that I see in the papers, like the Metro, just stuff like I saw that stacked up on the side and that story about a thumb which fell from the sky and I think it was dropped by a bird and landed outside an office where a cleaner smoking a cigarette thought it was a piece of chicken thrown from a window. So I want to make a film about this one day, but I haven't quite done it yet. Um, yeah, so I get influenced when I'm walking around just by stuff that I see in the street. Um, so these are some photographs I took um, outside, I think, God knows, Elephant Castle. 
um, and then it influenced me to make this book called Relax, uh, the title referring to chemical hair straightening. Um, so then I put some of their chemical hair straightener on a photograph and wiped it off, and that's what happened. Um, I think Chris Rocks made a film about it, but I came up with the idea first. Um, <laughs> when I wiped it off, I thought, oh shit, you know, I've been doing this with my hair for a long time, it doesn't, it doesn't stop me. I don't really think it needs to be a big deal about people straightening their hair, but I decided to make a book of it. So it was like a combination of my own photos with uh, found. Um, and this is a photo based on the blue people because of the sun sort of lightening the photographs. So I wanted to do a cyanotype print, which is using light to expose your drawing using a stencil. Oh, yeah. And so I kind of tried to mix the European hair with like the sort of afro hair stuff that I've been looking at. So then my next book that I've done is uh, Lost in the Supermarket that I did during uni. Um, so I went around Westfield because I used to go to shopping centres with my mum because I was spoiled and I had a lot of sentiment about them. Um, so I just sort of started snapping and made a sort of nondescript book about it. Um, and then I made another one which was called Leisure Terror and this time I tried to sort of cut into them uh, a bit more and I like to focus on, I don't know, just the architecture and um, I wish that I'd printed them much bigger than the smaller books that I'd done. Um, but yeah, it was just sort of like a mixture of quotes I'd found about shopping centres and the collages I'd made. And then finally, because I enjoy being uncomfortable, I decided <laughs> to do... Um, a book about Scientology, um, having been invited to uh, L. Ron Hubbard's 100th anniversary. I'm not a Scientologist. I had a great time. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is in the sort of core of the place in East Hampstead. Um, it's like a castle made in the 70s. I'd recommend anyone to go. Um, so I made a series of collages from my own photos when I was there. Um, yeah, and it was, a, it was a very unique experience. But I think that it made me think a lot about religion and that you can't really judge until you go. Um, so this is a piece I did for a theme called Underachievement, which I picked at uni. And um, I mixed my own drawings when I was younger uh, with some stuff I'd found. And while at uni, I decided to do this Brighton Photo Biennial Training Day for workshops. And this is where I sort of began doing my first workshop with young people. Um, I showed them some of the collages that I had done, and then they did them. Uh, their sort of response using my photocopier and some collage material that I brought them. And I was, yeah, I was quite pleased with them. I thought a lot of the collages are better than mine. And then the next piece, uh, workshop series I did was called Highland to Hastings uh, with Creative Partnerships um, and I got the opportunity through the artist who'd recommended me at Brighton Photo Biennial. Um, so it was kind of advertised for artists of African descent which made me feel a bit weird. Um, this is a cover for a zine and that was kind of what was going on in my mind at the time and this was in the actual interview. There was like a bongo drum and stuff and it made me feel a bit uncomfortable and I didn't really know what to think but I don't know if I even agree with Black History Month to be honest with you but I did it so I got paid <laughs> and I believe in the cause no no I do believe in it it's good there's a lot of stuff it basically it's based in Hastings there was a rise in uh, certain hate crimes that were going on and they thought it would be a good idea to send in a load of artists so I had fun and I think the kids managed to these were like nine-year-olds talk about my own, my dad's uh, history in America, my family, my granny lived in segregation, so I kind of spoke to them about it, and they've illustrated segregation, the, the move that a lot of uh, African-Americans did, and then finally integrating in the cities elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I got in the newspaper, which is like the local Hastings yeah. Observer. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and then the next one, uh, Tooting Market, 21st of April. Please come. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Well, I can bet and it's fine. I can crouch. Do you want to do test? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so hello. That's my name. There we go. So I'm just going to start um, showing you some of my influences so you know where I'm coming from. Um, but I'm a freelance illustrator. I graduated five months ago. And um, yeah, I'm just going to show you my main passion, which is um, I love early 20th century art. I've, uh, I'm obsessed by it. Um, I've got a few slides to show you. Um, just basically, I just love it. Everything about the era, the clothes, the cars, the war, everything is beautiful. Um, the architecture, um, and especially German Expressionism is a, like a keen interest with me. Um, and costumes, and it's basically Art Deco, and I have a huge collection on my laptop, which I come back to ever so often, like pretty much every day at my desk, that um, fuels my creative practice and fuels um, this is the work you're about to see, really. Um, I mean, look at that, it's early films. They kind of got much more surreal and magical as that, pretty much. Um, yeah, it's just captivating, and I love everything about it. So this leads to my first piece, which I was lucky enough to exhibit in the V&A um, in my second year. Um, and this was related to Henry Matisse, who designed um, costumes for an Art Deco ballet, um, which is Russian. Uh, I think it was 1925 that it was performed. Um, but I just love repetition and the, the boldness and the spirit of Art Deco, and I just wanted to capture that for the exhibition, which was about um, going around the V&A and finding stuff that we liked and uh, that that you know, we could find an inspiration from it. And I just love all of the crazy costumes. And uh, Matisse designed these costumes so that they were bold and quite simple. But when the dancers moved, they became a rhythmic motion of, like, of pattern. And I just think that idea of something basic becoming um, complex and creating beautiful rhythms and, and movement is just, is just beautiful. And that's why, pretty much why I love Art Deco so much. It's so simple, but when it comes together, it's it's inspiring. And it kind of relates to my uh, London prints. Um, these were based on all the London underground stations that have closed down. And they closed down in the 20s and 30s, which was awesome for me, because it meant I could uh, do a project based around them. Um, in fact, one of them is reopened, so I need to kind of scrap that one. Um, but um, yeah, I just love this era so much. And I'm not entirely sure why, but it's just everything about it. It's just it's beautiful. Um, and then, so this was uni work, and I progressed, uh, I left uni, I joined an agency. Um, and then this is just going back to other themes that, um, that I like about them, and especially the portrayal of women and nature in Art Deco is something I find fascinating, um, just because before Art Deco, they were like objectified and you know, flowery women, and there were things to look at. But in, through this powerful movement, they became seductive and became the shapes, just like Henry Matisse's dancers. Um, and they took on a whole new form, and that's what I really, really love about these two images in particular, is that they've transformed into something more than just, um, you know, just women or flowery or things that came before them, like Art Nouveau and things like that. Um, so they, I love these images. Um, and then... I got invited to do a mural for ZZ's in Brighton. Um, so I just played on the themes, um, again, of Art Deco and things like that, really, um, which was fun. I still haven't done this yet, this design yet, but it's going to go ahead, hopefully, in the next month or so. Um, so that's the, the rough that hopefully will go on the wall. So look out for it if you're ever eating in uh, Brighton and the ZZ's. And then my final show was these... Um, I, I like books and narrative. Um, I'm really... Um, I want to move into publishing and things like that. Um, so these are two prints that were to do with my favourite novel. And my favourite novel was called We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. And I think it's a beautiful book and it's very inspired by fairy tales. And the, in a story, the youngest daughter of this rich American family in the 50s, she puts arsenic in the sugar bowl and the whole family dies. Um, and she lives in this big old mansion by herself. And it's her like 
in a monologue of the last, you know, the last few days of her being this crazy little child in this big mansion. So I was kind of wanting to pick up that dark side, but in a kind of sugar-coated kind of um, fairy tale, folky kind of aesthetic, which. I don't know, I really like this prince because it's just it's a pretty personal book to me because I feel like that little girl sometimes. <laughs> I'm a little merry cat, like creep <laughs> scared. <laughs> anyway, so I joined East Wing, which they saw my prince and they were really like me, so even though I'm not gonna poison anyone hopefully. Um, and joined and I joined them like five months ago and it's been great. Um, done a lot of work with them and it's great working with different other illustrators and we've just done some bunting for the Jubilee that we've all collaborated, we all did a a triangle each with our designs on, which was really fun to do. Um, we do loads of different stuff. I've did even like little cheeky wine bottle labels that they get me doing. So like, um, it's great. Um, and the whole um, process of working for them, I have very limited time um, sometimes to get <coughs> jobs through. So I have a huge amount of Illustrator the shapes, like a whole, f like f files and files and files and files and files of just things I can throw together. Um, but sometimes I hate the whole process of how computerized it is. Um, so I'm very keen about doing experiments and new techniques. So I've developed this cool way of painting back um, uh, paint onto acetate and carving it out because I can't afford lino. Um, so I'm creating new ways of working in a short amount of time so that I can bash out as much work as possible but still make it feel like going back to those old processes and my love for Art Deco and early 20th century art, pretty much. So I combine like, the illustrator and different techniques and processes to make things like this book cover for the picture of Dorian Gray, which um, so all that was carved out of acetate, which took ages, and then scanned back in and colorized and things like that. So I, I think it's important to build a routine in, in your work and how you work as an illustrator. But I think it's great and vital to start doing new things um, with your work. Um, and to never stop experimenting. I'm forever at my desk, you know, pouring paint on everything and seeing if I can carve it off, you know, it's, I love it, it's great. So I do things like for East Wing, I do like Easter and Valentine's things, I do lots of range of different things. Um, and this is for my new commission, I've got a new commission at the moment that just is so big in such a short, short amount of time that I've just had to just draw crazy amounts, so I've got no time to sit there with my illustrator file anymore. So my process has changed again. So I am just now I've become this line drawing wizard and I have to, get to be as fast as possible and bash out as much as possible and all this needs to be turned into lino cut stuff but it's just like things are getting really busy at the moment so just, it's another example of how just to be ready for when processes change and jobs change and just to be on your feet constantly and not to get comfortable in the same old routine. And I'm just going to finish on my first book cover that comes out. Um, called Seldom Seen, it's on Amazon at the moment, which I'm really ecstatic about. Um, and this was the same, all this is learned from the same processes that um, I've just talked about pretty much. Um, but I feel like it, it relates back to my love for Art Deco and things like that. Like it's nothing to do with Art Deco, nothing to do with the early 20th century, but it just shows my journey through as an illustrator and just my love for pattern and print and movement and things like that. So there we go, thank you very much. <laughs> So I wrote these when they are, I was sober, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not sober anymore. Um, <laughs> hi, I, I'm Joe Goff. Hello. Hi. I'm going to uh, talk about my work for a little bit. Yeah, this isn't going to be easy for me to say, so I'll just say it. Yeah, uh, this is what I'm working on at the moment. It's a series of drawings about motels and the desert and uh, life on the road. I think um, one thing that you'll probably get from my work is that I spend a lot of time looking on the other side of the Atlantic. I'm kind of a bit obsessed with America. 
and Americana and stuff like that. And yeah, I think it's just something about the sense of space and the architecture and the landscape and the idiomatic language and stuff like that. And especially the desert, you know, and uh, it still seems kind of like a wild and <coughs> weird and, and dangerous place and these people in these kind of transitory sort of places and yeah, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what it's about. And the, the, this is kind of where I'm going from with it. This is Robert Adams, who's a, an American photographer, and this is something that will crop up a lot in what I talk about, about America. And yeah, he kind of documents um, just buildings and how it got built up and developed throughout the West. And um, all these kind of like low slung and simple kind of structures and these kind of like bleak landscapes and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's kind of really what I'm, what I'm into. And he uses a lot of black in his, uh, in his, in his photographs. And yeah, I, I, I kind of like that. Um, and this is Lee Friedlander as well. Um, he's one of my all-time favorites. This is one of his series, uh, Little Screens. And I think he really has kind of like an um, insider view on America. As much as I am an outsider looking at America, he really kind of understands it a little bit. So it really kind of focuses on the vernacular, you know, just like, um, just like everyday things. So just be kind of like, I mean, especially these, I mean, this series of work is completely bereft of, of people, but it's kind of like a, like a still life thing. It's all about the relationship between objects in a room and, uh, and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I think that's really, he makes it kind of really potent and really symbolic. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is slightly older work. This is um, based on 911 dispatch calls, again, relating to America. And uh, yeah, when this was exhibited, it kind of came with um, like a tape of audio recordings of people in the dispatcher and people in horrible situations. And um, so I, you know, decided to draw them. <laughs> but yeah, and, and well, it's a shame actually, because you know, when you, you, you could hear it and you could see it, but you can see it on my website, which is at <laughs> UK. I've got some cards in the, in the back if you want to uh, check them out. And, and, and yeah, I think um, I've never been a particularly academic person. I've always kind of reacted something to much, something more strongly in the way that it makes you feel than the way that what I think it's about. Um, so in my work, I've always tried to kind of imbue it with a sense of atmosphere and a sense of mood. And I've always tried to. Um, I'm, I'm kind of working on kind of narratives through it, you know, kind of fractured elliptical narratives so you can sort of make out of it what you think it's about. And I never want to, I like the mystery, you know. I, I don't want to say anything, I just, you know, that's, 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 that's pretty much it. And you can see my kind of interest in, in objects and rooms and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's that. Uh, this is, uh, so you know where my work is coming from. This is uh, Andrzej Klamowski. He's a, uh, a Polish post designer, and he's a two at the RCA, and he's a, he's a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I've, been a, I've been a long time. I loved his work, and um, just kind of love how, how graphic and, and simple it is. And this is, this is from his books, which is what I love more. And they're entirely pictorial, but they read really like really well, really well, you yeah. uh, know, really well, <laughs> you know, and yeah, that's, that's, that's always something I want to be able to do is kind of have that narrative in my work and, and you know, and you could take any double spread of any of his books and he would just, it says something, it says something great in this, they just like layer with atmosphere and, you know, stuff like that. <coughs> oh, this is Ray Pettibon. Um, even if you don't know the name, you, if you're into good music, you probably would have seen his work before. Um, yeah, and I don't know, my work can be kind of meticulous. You know, I take a lot of time with it. and can be kind of labor intensive, but I just love how energetic he draws and, uh, and stuff like that. And I think is in terms of how that relates to the guy I was talking about before, he strikes the balance between image and, and type like perfectly, really, you know. And uh, it's, just, it's just kind of all about capturing little moments between people and... Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, he's got a um, erratic but, but brilliant mind. Um, and this is Ed Hopper, another one of uh, my all-time favorites, favorite um, American painter. And you can see, you know, America kind of comes up a lot in, in my work. And I kind of like how it's, 
how it's kind of about the tension between people and their surroundings and stuff like that. Like a lot of his work, it's almost like you've walked into a room and it's either just before or just after something really big has happened. Um, and then even though yeah, it's all about capturing kind of like little moments. And, you know, I love that. Ah, there we go. Say the best for last. Um, this, is, uh, this is Twin Peaks. And I think anyone who's, who's known me for any amount of time will... I, I kind of bang on about it to the point where they're kind of sick of hearing me talking about it. So I, mean, I think anything I could say about Twin Peaks or Lynch is kind of redundant because it's already been said before. But one thing I will say is that... <laughs> and, and you're going to enjoy it when I say it. Um, is that when I was on about like the vernacular before with Lee Friedlander and again with my work, he kind of like shoots interiors like John Wayne would shoot like his Arizona, his landscape, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, it kinda, you kind of like look at this. So he's another person who finds the importance in just little things, you know, it'll be like a lamp on a bedside table or it'll be like a telephone or it'll be like, a, like an ashtray with a smoking cigarette or in this instance with James Hurley and, and the two beers and the two lovely ladies, brother. Um, but, and it, it kind of just, you know, obviously dripping with atmosphere, but it just makes, just, uh, just something that um, makes it seem very familiar, but also suddenly very alien and dangerous and wild at the same time. So, uh, so you can kind of see where I'm coming from with that. And I think that's, that's me done, actually. And that's everyone done. So thank you. Sorry, I'm going to bore everyone again. Um, I, it's just thank yous, basically. So thank you to everyone that spoke, because I know, I know some were really nervous, but were still brilliant. So everyone who spoke was absolutely brilliant. We can't you know, fault them. And thank you very much for coming and talking. And we have to thank our photographer, Manny, because she's brilliant. And our film guys, Natasha and Andrew. Woo! And obviously, that Turkish man's ear. He's got to be thanked. I, you know. And then I'm leaving the important one last, which is Katie, who without her, the show wouldn't really happen. So. for being a part of this. Um, I'm so proud of you, you know, hearing some of you speak as well. It's just amazing. Like, I love you all so much. And I'm just really grateful that you've trusted me with your work to do this. And thank you to Zia and Chris, of course, for making it possible for me to, to come and co-create this event. So, yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed it. Um, yeah, that's it, really. Thank you. We're open uh, tomorrow and Friday as well. So if anyone's free tomorrow and Friday, you want to bring one down, come down. Um, Want to tweet about us all that crap? Uh, we have a Twitter. It is something funky, you know, exactly how it's spelt on the fly, if you can even read it. Um, and Which was designed by the lovely Grace, who's oh, yeah. over there Thank somewhere. You, Grace. Thank you, Grace. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to tweet about it or Facebook or anything like that, we've, we've got all that stuff. Um, and if you want to email us, it's hello at somethingfunky.com. But thank you very much for coming, everyone. <laughs>